Good evening. You know what? I know that I haven't been pushing the dice because they changed their name. Metallic Dice Games is no longer Metallic Dice Games. It's now Fan Roll. Uh, you can still get 10% off by using the code SMSDICE10. <clears throat> go there. 10% off of any of your orders with the code SMSDICE10. But go to fanroll.com. No longer metallicdice.com. So we're still doing it. We're still we're still doing our sponsor there. Um, great bunch of stuff they're putting out. Boom. I like these really nice dice. Really nice dice. Except for, yet again, I've you know love that. So remember, it's now no longer metallic dice games. It is now fan roll. So SMS D I C E ten. Get ten percent off your purchase. And now get ready for the show. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday morning, and you know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, Platoon, I'm your host, Captain Cartoon, bringing you the best in cartoons. We don't even put, when I put a time limit on, or, uh, you know, on this, just cartoons. And uh, as always, Saturday morning cereals is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book collectible. Video game, magic, uh, toy store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. So, it's that time of year. It's time to celebrate whether you celebrate Christmas, whether you celebrate Hanukkah, whether you celebrate Kwanzaa, whether you celebrate Yule, whatever you celebrate. It's that time of the year. And, uh, since there's not a whole lot of cartoons, we're doing the Christmas cartoons. Uh, not necessarily all Saturday morning cartoons. Few of them are. Few of them aren't. Uh, some are going back to some cartoons connected to what we did on Halloween. So, yeah, this this is gonna be all over the board. Uh, it's gonna have some newer stuff. Go have some older stuff. There's legitimately one I put on here just because I thought the name sounded funny. So. We're going to bring you the first episode for today, uh, and that is Chuck Wood Critters. Um, Chuck Wood Critters, um, I, I remember the characters. Uh, they appear in some other cartoons and some other holiday cartoons. But uh, other than that, here you go. This is Chuck Wood Critters. Some of the critters head south to warmer climates. Others stay put and try to sleep clear through Christmas, all the way to spring. But even in nature's land, not everything runs smoothly. Oh, oh I can't believe winter's here already. I guess I got a late start. Did anybody see my flock? But they were flying south, wherever that is. <laughs>
put that there? Yeah, right in the middle of our sledding run. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Frisky, look. <laughs> it's Buttons and Rusty. And we thought it was a couple of abominable snow critters. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, well, uh, we're fine. Uh, hi, Bear Beck. Sure, Frisky. Uh, we meant to do that. Sort of. Snowplow. But, 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 Pop, it wasn't our fault. It, it was this huge monster. Monster, huh? Yeah, yeah, he was huge. Oh, I wouldn't worry much. It was probably just a big old moose straight off the trail. Oh, well, let's head for Jonesy's place. Going to visit Rel. For Christmas. Happy Holidays, signed Ranger Jones. Gee, look at all this mail. Wow. Boy, look at all that Christmas stuff. Yeah, too bad us critters don't have Christmas like that. Uh huh. Tree and all those decorations. Christmas celebration for critters. Uh, Jefferson! Why, it's beneath the dignity of us critters to pay attention to any of that Christmas nonsense. Uh oh, yeah, sure, I forgot. Well, I don't think it's fair. Me either. Anyway, who said we couldn't have a critter's Christmas celebration? <laughs> yeah! It would be so much fun! We'll need a tree and decorations. And lots of goodies. We already have a sled. <laughs> so, what are we waiting for? We're gonna find the perfect tree. What about that one? Not bad. Nice of you to drop in, but isn't it past your hibernation time? Nope, not yet. We've got a better idea. Oh, wait till we tell you about the Critters Christmas celebration we're gonna have. Critters Christmas? Oh, why, it sounds wonderful, doesn't it, Skipper? <laughs> tell me all about this. <laughs> Let's look through 
here. to the rabbits. <laughs> oh, Skipper! <laughs> That's only because we are so good at digging! <laughs> so, uh, what's this Critter's Christmas all about, huh? huh? Oh, you'll love it! Wait till we set up the tree and make decorations and collect the goodies! Goodies? Wait a minute, did, did, did you say goodies? What kind of goodies? I mean, you mean goodies to eat? Is that what you're talking about? That kind of goodies? Sure, to eat. I guess it could be other things, too. Oh, I don't know why I always let those cubs talk me into one of their crazy schemes. But, Skipper, a Christmas celebration sounds so exciting, I can hardly... <laughs> oh, my golly! Shucks. I just don't understand why is everyone always running away. Now it's just me, Buttons, and Rusty's old pal, Lester Eli Gator. Hey, wait, where are you going? Run! The, the, the monster! Oh, that horrible tail and those glassy eyes! But what about the Christmas tree? No, not now. I'm going right home and never coming out. Oh, me too. Come on, Bluebell, hurry. Maybe we should come back later. Or we could go over there and take a look. Maybe it went away. No, wait, wait. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Yeah, maybe it went away. I don't believe this. I really don't. I'm hearing things. I am having a bad dream. Wait up! I mean, wait up. It'd probably take us hours and hours. Hey, get away! Come on, we gotta stop it! Watch that! 
the sled. Is it over? Is it over? Am I still alive? Am I? Am I? Yeah! But wasn't it fun, Skeeter? Fun? <laughs> fun? Fun? <laughs> so all we need now is ornaments and decorations. Right. Now we've got to tell all the other critters about the tree so they can start making all the Christmas stuff. That's all. Now you can count me out, okay? Is that too much to ask? No! <laughs> <laughs> We're making decorations to put up on the tree. We're making them with joy and care for everyone to see. We're making decorations to help us celebrate. With everyone cooperating, there's not long to wait. Nuts and acorns, pine cones, berries, feathers, tiny stones. Make our tree a side delight. We're making decorations to put upon the tree. We'll share them with our forest friends for a winter jamboree. For a winter jamboree. <laughs> hey, come on, move it. We don't have all day, okay? Let me take care of this. Hello. Christmas. Huh? What? We need you to make decorations for the tree. Oh, but, but it's cold out there. We'll be back soon, Turner, to see how you're coming along on the decorations. Nobody's home! Gee, first Bluebell and Skipper and now Turner. At this rate, no one's gonna be around for the celebration. We're not quitting! Come on, Buttons. We need something real special for the very top of the tree. Like... a star! Wow! But where are we gonna find something like that? Where else? Jonesy's workshop. Okay, okay, now I'm thinking, uh, sometime around Groundhog Day, huh? Hey, wait up! What I tell you? Yeah, Jonesy won't mind if we borrow some of this stuff. Okay, okay. But let's not waste a good nut on this stuff. Is it getting dark in here? Yep. We better collect the rest of the decorations for the tree. I'll get the sled. What's the matter, Skeeter? Need a hand to get down? Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, that's a good thing. It's gonna be dark out soon, huh? Uh, maybe I better stay back here and, uh, dry the ornaments. Yeah, that's right. Dry the ornaments. <laughs> okay? Da 
just right. What are you doing here? You invited me to come up and see you, didn't you? At least that's what you said last time we talked back down in the bayou. Oh, sure, but how? <laughs> Your old pal Lester dressed himself up in this nice, warm old coat. Oh, boy, it's cold up here. Anyways, then I hops a ride on that old Christmas tree train, and here I was. Except not one of you would stand still long enough for me to introduce myself. I mean, it was supposed to be a nice surprise. Besides, I figured y'all and little Bear Bear would be happy to see some more of this. <gasps> by you, honey! Custom made by the world's sweetest honeybees. Whoa, this is terrific, Lester! Can you stay for our Critters Christmas celebration? I'd be honored. All it needs now is some lights. Lights? Lights? Quack, quack. Anyone see? A flock of ducks pass this way. Oh, no! Not again! Matter of fact, I did see a flock of your buddies just a couple of days ago. <laughs> what? You, you did? Where? Where? I'll give you directions. But you got to bring some friends of mine back here first, okay? Deal. I want to imagine you the ones I've had ever imagined. Ready, Lester? All right, then. Let's move out. It was the day before Christmas, and all through the park, not a critter was stirring. You'd have thought it was dark. But two cubs had a dream that nothing could change. And And the stranger who almost scared Christmas away. It turns out was a friend who came up for the day. Now the critters have joined in to the laughter and cheer. And while we're all together, we know Christmas is here. Oh boy, that's a pretty sight. But y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Quack, quack. This way, fellas. What is that? I told y'all, some friends of mine. Say, Buttons, you did yourself proud. You too, Rusty. Ah, uh, we couldn't have done it without our pal Lester. No, man, it was nothing. That's about the prettiest sight I've ever seen. Huh? Jonesy! <laughs> yep, how could I miss Christmas with my favorite critters? Besides, I brought some goodies for everyone. Boys better be heading back to that nice warm swamp. <laughs> okay, little cracker. Now's your chance. To learn more about the celebration of Christmas, the Library of Congress suggests these books, Celebrating Christmas Around the World by Herbert H. Wernicke, The Christmas Tree Book by Philip V. Snyder, and Guinness Book of Christmas, edited by Tom Hartman. These and many other informative books are waiting for you in your local library and bookstore. Visit them. They'll be happy to help you read more about it. 
of water. The evil Rulons build a dam to cut off the Dino Riders' water supply. Playing in the mud again, Krulos? Crush them, Cobras. With what, Krulos? The Pachycephalosaurus moved the boulders. What's wrong? Got a tummy ache, T-Rex? The Stegosaurus breaks the dam. I'll get you yet, Tark. Stegosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex with motorized walking action and Pachycephalosaurus each with figures in battle gear. Dino Riders! The basic domino rally set lets you... And with the deluxe domino rally set, you can actually... Domino rally! Basic, intermediate, or deluxe! Or you can get several sets and go... Hey, hope you like the Chuck Wood Critters Christmas there. Um, some of these cartoons I had never heard of or somehow I found because I found connected to a cartoon we'd already aired. But this is how it's going to go. But, uh, alright. I want to know what year was your best Christmas? If you have best year, you can go, hey, I need, uh, I want to say, uh, 78... Uh, 81 and uh, 83 were really good. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Just, just let me know, man. It's Christmas. So, all right. So we're going to go back to actual Saturday morning. Uh, and that's going to be Fat Albert's Christmas from 1977. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a real shame. Man, I love Fat Albert, man. You know? Not gonna lie. So it's a decent cartoon and stuff. It's just kind of got that dark shadow over it. But I remember watching this one every year. I remember watching this in school. So you know, I, I also wanted. Where, where's your school? Did you have like the the uh, uh, every year like Christmas time? So the teachers didn't have to teach or nothing. They would literally like the uh, three days before you'd start watching all the Christmas movies. You'd all go to the gym, they'd set up the projector, and you'd watch Rudolph, you'd watch Frosty, all that stuff. I tell you what, it, I don't even know, man. It's, it's, uh, that's, that's, with, with the cartoons, seriously, man. I remember it was the, um, ah, the, like, you know, the stop motion and stuff like that, too. So, but then, then at a certain point, they just stopped doing it at schools, I think. I don't know. Maybe they went back to it. Since now you just they have those projector TVs in the room. Huh. Stuff is great. There you go. This is Fat Albert's Christmas from 1977. Enjoy. This is the Fat Albert Christmas Special. underway. Come on, dudes. We gotta get this nativity scene down cold. What are we doing this for, anyway? Because we want to surprise our folks by putting on this pageant. And besides, it's the bestest way in the world to get the real feeling of Christmas. Throw that straw on the stable floor, not on me. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. Who are the wise men? Yeah. Now, we got a head of stable animals. Where's the beast? Here I am. Here I am, Doobie. Hey, Fat Albert. When does the angel come in? Right away. Get it, Rudy? Oh, you <laughs> 
Reynolds, we gotta get back to rehearsing. Okay, Bill, you the Christmas angel. Yep, that's me. I just flew in from the hillside where I was laying this message on these shepherds. What's the message? Hey, wise men, gather around. Uh, uh, behold. Got it. Behold, I bring you wise men tidings of great joy. You know that star you've been tailgating? Well, this is the place. Shortly, a young man and his wife will come here so she can give birth to the Savior. They're here! Open up the door! Open up, you kids! That don't sound like no Savior to me. Open up your hands! Oh, 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 take my Tyrone. I told you, kids, you gotta dare down this clubhouse. I, I don't know. Uh, we, 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 we thought you were keeping score. I've been very patient with you, you whippersnappers. But, Mr. Tyrone, us kids really aren't doing anything wrong. Ha! That's what you say. Every day you're here, the market value of my junkyard property goes down. Please, Mr. Tyrone, we... What are you supposed to be? Well, um, I'm the Christmas angel. Christmas angel? Yeah, we're just acting out the Christmas story. Christmas? Sentimental tummy rock. Right? I'm having this clubhouse bulldozed to the ground. You're not out of here by tonight. Get away! Ah! Hey, hey, hey. Well, I guess that blows our show. Southern Christmas, baby, it is going to baby. I just can't believe we really got to give up all this. Nobody here. Oh, yeah? Uh, excuse me. My name is Marshall, and... Uh, How you doing, Marshall? Not so good. Me and my mom and dad, we're in an awful jam. We're from out of town. And everything's gone wrong since we got here. The job my dad was supposed to get fell through. And we got no place to stay, and my mom's going to have a baby any time now. Oh, Ray. What's the matter, Marge? I, I guess it's just a false alarm. You sure? Yeah, I'm OK. Is it time for the baby to come, Dad? No, not yet, sir. Would you folks like to come in out of the cold? It's only a clubhouse, but it's not too bad. Much obliged. Hey, buddy, what's the deal here? That lady's not coming in here, is she? Oh, no! In our all he man no woman allowed clubhouse? Just make yourself comfortable, ma'am. Now, where's the nearest hospital? Bill, why don't you take the man over there, okay? Okay, come on. I'll be back soon, dear. Hey, Fat Albert, what's the big idea of bringing a lady in here, man? Bruce, you got no cruise at all. Cruise, schmuz. You listen to me, Flapjack. Those people are in bad trouble. Oh, my gosh. Now what? I just remembered. Old tight wide Tyrone is going to smash the clubhouse down to the ground. You take charge till I get back. Where are you going? I got to see a man about a bulldozer. What do you want, Fat Albert? It's about a, a clubhouse. Ah, uh, don't bother me. That clubhouse is coming down. And that's that. But, Mr. Tyrone, please. Go away! Can't you see I'm busy? Please, Mr. Tyrone, it's not just for us kids. Bah! Uh, uh, you see, there's just families in big trouble, and the father has no job, and the mom is gonna have a baby. 
Caesar's greatness, sir. Would you care to contribute to the destitute lighthouse keeper's mission house? Get away from me, you old freeloader. All right, all right. But you're the only man in his whole block who, who turned me down. Get a dime if you weren't wearing that moth-eating old Santa Claus suit. Just, just remember, you don't get nothing in this world unless you give something first. Hey, that's what I've been trying to say. Now, about the clubhouse. Clubhouse, eh? And Albert? <clears throat> I've got a little deal for you. But it isn't really me. See, it's this family. Yes, yes, yes. Now, here's my proposition. <clears throat> hey, hey, hey. Step this way for Tyrone's big Christmas giveaway. Keep it up, Ben Albert. You are working wonders. Yeah, but I wonder how that poor family at the clubhouse is doing. Oh, uh, nurse, excuse me. Oh, doctor, I... <clears throat> Later, uh, I'm, I'm very busy. Why don't we ask her? Excuse me, miss. My wife is going to have a baby. Well, what's this? Fill out the form, please. Now, let me see your insurance card. I don't have any insurance. I'm sorry, but charity cases are handled at the city hospital. Here you are, Mrs. Franklin. Thank you very much. Marge, are you okay? Fine now, Ray. Where's Marshall and the other boys? Well, they went out to get some firewood and food. What about the hospital? They won't take us. We've got to go to the city hospital. But, gee, that's such a long way. Then we better get going. Oh! Oh! What's the matter? Oh! Oh! oh. Ray! Ray, I just can't make it. Oh! 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 Marge, you all right? Don't worry, Ray. I'll be okay. Come on, Russell. We gotta get help. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Come on, Russell. Pick up your heels. Wait up, Bill. <laughs> get up, Bill. We gotta go. Cool it, Russell. I just thought of something. What? I don't know where we're going. Oh. We can go home and get Mom and Dad. They're yeah, out Christmas shopping. Well, then, we can get the swap squad. I know. I got the solution. What? Well, ask Fat Albert what to do. Yeah. Wait for me. Hey, hey, hey. It's Tyrone's big Christmas giveaway. Hey, hey, hey. Well, what do we got here? Mr. Sellout. You're working for the enemy. Seven paddle. What a big idea. Oh, cool it. Oh, it. Now, just cool it. You dudes better get your facts straight before you mess them up. Ah, oh, oh, I'm working out a deal with Tyrone to save our clubhouse. All I'm trying to do is get customers in the store with these free gifts. Free gifts! Hey, man, we well, man. Man. Come on, come on. hey, 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 get away. Get away. What's the meaning of this? Uh, you see, Mr. Tyrone, it's like this. I see you giving away my merchandise to your no-good hoodlum friends. But, Mr. Tyrone... You're fired! Turn in your Santa Claus suit! Your face reminds me of a cat eating lemons! A cat eating lemons? Yeah, a sourpuss! Get out! Get out! Clubhouse is coming down! Quick as I can get a bulldozer there! Give me that suit! Come on! Come on! Just a second. Put foot down! Keep your hands off me! Well, I've known you for a lot of years, and I just got one question for you. What is it? How did you ever get to be the meanest, cheapest, honorous, skin flintless, spitefulest, hard, hardest, old goat ever draw breath? Huh? Well, just a minute. Uh, mud foot? Mr. Tyrone really ain't all that bad to do. What? We talking about the same mean old coot? Or it just could be that he acts so mean because maybe nobody's around to be nice to him since his wife died. I don't want to stand that kid. Of course not. Life is a matter of give and take. Fat Albert Segura, you're a taker. What do you mean? 
I got a lot to give. Yeah, one trouble is nobody wants to take what you got to give. I don't have to listen to this. You're going to listen. Ever since your wife, Martha, died, you've been impossible. You've been shortchanging your customers. You've been snapping at everybody. But you got so mean, even the bill collectors won't come near you. Now, what do you think Martha would say if she could see you now? Well, life hasn't been worth much since she's gone. No, you haven't been worth much since she's been gone. You only got one chance left, Tyrone. See you around. Wait a minute. What's my chance? What's the difference? You won't do it. I will. I will. What is it? Nah, you wouldn't do a good deed. You wouldn't know how. Good deed? Marshall's mom is going to have a baby any second. Okay, dudes, here's the game plan. Rudy, you take them down, get Doc Mercy, bring him back to the clubhouse. Now, the rest of you dudes, come back with me to the clubhouse. place to stay we just can't make it with another mouth to feed no ray it isn't your fault but it is i don't make enough to even feed poor little marshall don't worry mom and dad i'm cutting out Did you, Mrs. Franklin? <laughs> no, not yet. We got old Doc Muncy coming over, okay? A doctor? Yeah, it's a real good one. He delivered me. Hey, hey, hey. That's right. It took you on two trips. Where's Marshall? I thought he was with you kids. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, he's outside playing someplace, I guess. Um, we'll go get him, won't we, gang? How are we gonna do that? We don't even know what... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll go find him right away. Russell, you remind me of school at vacation time. School at vacation time? Yeah, no class. Well, come on, gang. Spread out. We gotta find Marshall fast. Marshall's missing? Oh, oh, Ray. I think it's time. The doctor, when is he gonna get here? Easy, boys. Easy. Come on, Doc. Hurry. If you don't get there in time, the baby you're going to have to slap himself. Come on. Get in the car. But, boys, wait. Let's go. I can't. Why not? This isn't my car. Oh. oh. Poor Mom and Dad. I'll go far away, where they'll never have to worry about me again. Marshall! 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 My baby, Marshall! Marshall! Hey, hey, hey! Don't run away! Come on, gang! Hey, hey Marshall! Oh hey, stop! Get Holy him. kids! Hey! It's a taste of all, a day not to miss. Ooh. Werther's Original Caramels. Discover the original fall flavor. Oh, hey, 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 get back here, boy. Hey. Oh, 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 oh,
all of you. Don't run away. Your mom wants you. the clubhouse. Marshal, give me your hand. Marshal! Marshal! Mrs. Franklin has just given birth to a baby. A baby? On my property? That's right. Now, I don't know what we would have done without this clubhouse or the help of these boys. Baby? Please, Mr. Tyrell, don't throw the baby out in the snow. What? These folks don't have no home, no job, nothing. You can put us guys in jail, hit us with your cane, do anything me you want to do. But please, don't hurt the baby, please. But this is no place for a baby. I'll get you to the hospital in my car. And as for a place to stay and a job, I have a few important associates in this community who can help. <sighs> All right, now that's it. All right. And as for this clubhouse, oh, I, well, now that it's a, a landmark, I couldn't tear it down now, could I? Hey, all right, I won't go gay, Mr. Hey, all right. Hey, gang, get around. I'm going to send you to the bridge. I'm going to send you to the Um, us dudes have a few little Christmas birthday gifts we want to lay on the baby here. What do you want? Here, this is for you. What's that? Mr. Tyrone, that only happens to be his bestest, favoritest thing in the whole world. A genuine brown hornet secret magnetized Dakota compass. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mr. Tyrone. Tyrone! Merry Christmas, Mr. Tyrone. Thank you, and a Merry Christmas to all of you.
Cover to cover, people discover Consumers distributing your Christmas book to value Create your own salon-style hair fashions with a Daisy Bonnet Super Airflow Hair Dryer. Also featured this week from Iona, the convenient compact Dirt Raider hand vacuum. And from General Instruments, the affordable Gerald 700 programmable TV converter. Your Christmas book to value. Consumers distributing. Hi, time for timer. What? No time for breakfast. Now look, since six o'clock last night, you haven't eaten a bite. Come on, I'll show you why that's really not the way for a growing kid to start a busy day. Here we are inside your body, and this noisy, empty space is your stomach getting angry because there's no food in the place. Uh-oh, let's find some food fast. Now listen, I don't want you to think this is the best way to eat breakfast, but in case you can't cook, and if you haven't time for a good cereal in a well-balanced meal, then this quickie breakfast is better than nothing at all, okay? Hey, here's orange juice and milk and fruit juice waiting to be taken. And bless my soul, right here's a bowl with one cold piece of steak in. A hard-boiled egg or chicken leg or cheese or luncheon meat or a peanut butter sandwich any time of day is a treat. So do keep your mom from grumbling and stop that stomach rumbling and keep your legs from stumbling when you play. You've got to eat some kind of breakfast every day. Who cares? Glass is in session at Bayside High. There's biology. Chocolate-covered grasshoppers. Chemistry. Psychology. Doesn't anybody feel the way I feel? Saved by the Bell premieres Monday, November 2nd on TBS. I don't know. Did you guys ever read these? The the, the Marvel's uh, official hair book to the Marvel Universe? Man, I love these things. This this all the hour. It was one picture and then, you know, told how the character became and, and important things. So, all right. I hope you guys like the Fat Albert's Christmas. And it, I, I legitimately think I saw this probably for a good 20 years every year at Christmas time. So, all right. So we're still doing more Saturday morning cartoons, and we're doing the Berenstain Bears, not the Berenstain Bears. This is Stain Berenstain Bears. Uh, this is the special from 1979. Let's say 77 because I uh, that was a fat hour one. Uh, 77, 79, uh, 1979. Um, you know the it, the the Berenstain Bears now, of course, have that thing. Man, I think that kind of draws from them. But man, Berenstain Bears were kind of important for a while to kids. So here you guys go. This is the Berenstain Bear Christmas. 1979. Enjoy. In bear country, Christmas excitement was mounting. The waiting was down to 10 hours and counting. The holly was hung. The presents were bought. A magnificent Christmas salmon was caught. Hey, everybody, I'm home. Hey, look, what? Look. Most fun of all, getting the tree. 
a tree full and fat, straight, green, and tall, for the Christmas delight of the bears, one and all. magnificent tree, a tree full and fat with oodles of needles and crannies and nooks. Get out the tree things. Where are the hooks? boxes of things in closets and cupboards and corners of halls. They had bangles and bells and bright colored balls. There were some that were bear looms saved year after year. A Santa bear sled with tiny reindeer. Strings of bright beads to hang in festoons. A musical bear that sang Christmassy tunes. Tis the season to be furry, especially if you're a bear. But the bear's finest tree thing, their finest by far, was the thing for the top, their Christmas tree star. It had 18 points and was so glittery bright that the stars of the heavens seemed dim in its light. What an array, what a display. What a grand and glorious sight it will be when we hang all this stuff on our Christmas tree. Why, bears will come from near and far to see how Christmassy we are. Ta-da! So all the bears needed now, don't you see? All that they needed now was the tree. A tree straight and tall. Fine, full, and fat. Come, cubs, said Papa, as he put on his hat. Now be sure to dress warmly, said wise Mama Bear. There's more than a hint of snow in the air. And oh, yes, by our tree down the road from Grizzly Gus. I'm sure he will have the right tree for us. Snow, said Papa, sniffing the air. Not a chance. The weather today will be bright and fair. <laughs> Besides, I can always tell if we're going to have snow by a sharp shooting pain in my left big toe. Bye-bye, Mama. Bye-bye. Bye, Mom. Bye-bye. As for Gus and those trees lying in stacks, <laughs> not for us. Papa said as he took up his axe. <laughs> But, Papa, I don't mean to fuss, but Mom said to buy one from Grizzly Gus. Christmas trees. <laughs> Fresh cut indeed. <laughs> it looks more like some overgrown evergreen weed. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, Gus. Well, we were just, uh, <clears throat> come, cubs. Brother and sister usually did what Mom said, but not Papa. Pop did whatever came into his head. And a fine, fat tree is what came into his head that particular Christmas. No matter what, no matter where, if it means going down to the Panama Isthmus, if it means climbing up to the top of Pikes Peak, I will find the right tree if it takes us a week. But, Papa, Christmas is just hours away. We must find our Christmas tree today. But Pop didn't hear. Papa was just a bit...
carried away. We need a tree for Christmas, a fine fat tree is a must. Without one Frankie Christmas Day will be an awful bust. A tree on which to hang our bells are brightly colored balls. And all the other things pop up in classes and in halls. A fine fat tree to put beneath our 18-pointed star. A tree to show how really, truly Christmassy we are. A Christmas tree and all that it implies. A And berry honeycomb. Crayfish fricassee. But first of all, my friends, first we need a tree. Yes, first, first of all, all, your friends, first we need a tree. We need a tree for Christmas, a fine fat tree is a must. Without one frankly, Christmas Day will be an awful bust. But Paul was forgetting something that day. Christmas is more than show and display. It's more than just tinsel and pink plastic stars and stuffing yourself with sugar nut bars. There was something important that Pop was forgetting. Christmas is forgiving. It isn't forgetting. This was a time to be thinking of others. Mamas, Papas, sisters, brothers. A time to think of each neighbor and friend. But all that was forgotten as they rounded a bend. As they rounded that bend, what did they see? Papa's perfect Christmas tree. What a tree. What a tree. This surely was it. Its green was so green. Its tall didn't quit. Its nooks all had crannies. Its crannies had nooks. The one question was, would they have enough hooks? What a tree for our bells, our bright colored balls, and all the things stacked up in our closets and halls. The perfect tree to put beneath our 18-pointed star. The perfect tree to show how Christmassy we are. Stand back, said Papa, making ready to chop. Wait! Sister cried. On the timely advice of small sister bear, Pop managed to stop that axe in midair. And a good thing, too, for that Christmas tree trunk just happened to be the home of a skunk. And some squirrels and a grouse and one small chipmunk also resided in that Christmas tree's trunk, plus 26 crows who were renting upstairs. And they were none of them happy to see those three bears. All this tree at first seemed quite a find. It isn't quite what I had in mind. Come, Cubs! There was something else Pa hadn't in mind as they rapidly left Mr. Skunk's tree behind. That the coming great day was the crow's Christmas, too. And the squirrels. And the chipmunks. If he chopped down their tree, what would they do? And the skunk and the grouse. What would they do if he chopped down their house? Where would they have their holly and bells? Their Christmas goodies? Their Christmassy smells? How would they enjoy their Christmas feast? But such questions as those did not bother Papa, not in the least. His head was so filled with his bangles and bells, his bright colored balls, his tree things stacked up in closets and halls, that there just wasn't room for anything more. Onward, cried Papa. And the bears pressed on with their Christmas tree chore. I will find the right tree. I must and I will. I will forward every stream. <laughs> Climb any hill. Go over Niagara Falls on a log. Penetrate the impenetrable fog. Brave the terrors of sinister bog. 
find the Christmas tree we seek? I will find the right tree if it takes us a week. No matter what. No matter where. Just as sure as my name is Papa Q Bear. But please, Papa, please, we must find a tree soon. Sister's right, Dad. It's getting late in the afternoon. A tree, fine and fat, straight, green, and tall. And at that very moment, the snow Mom predicted started to fall. Hey, wait, Papa, hold it, wait for me. Chocolate-covered snails! Chocolate-covered snails! Yeah! Yes, a Christmas tree is something we cannot do without. Because a tree with all the trimmings is what Christmas is about. What a tree! Yeah, it's really a beauty. Axe, Papa said. <laughs> do your duty. It was quite a fine tree. Sedate and tall, graceful and regal. It was also, it happened, the home of an eagle. And a hawk. And a wolf. And a great snowy owl. The eagle took off, while the hawk and the wolf and the great snowy owl set up a terrible, terrible howl. The noise seemed to come from every direction. Then, Mr. Eagle expressed his objection. back there wasn't quite it. Its green was too green. Yeah, and it leaned a bit. It wasn't quite what I had in mind. Come, we still have a tree to find. Completely ignoring Papa's left big toe, the snow had become a really big snow. A snow of snows, a blizzard of blizzards. Why, there was snow on the ground, up to their gizzards. Up the mountain, follow me. I'll find one soon, you'll see. You'll see I'll find the perfect Christmas tree. I hope so, Dad. The snow's getting deep, and the mountain is getting pretty steep. Full and fat, tall and green. The finest tree you've ever seen. Now that is the kind of tree I mean. Hurry, Papa, chop it down. Yes, we still have time to get back to town. But Papa was silent as he looked at that tree. Strangely silent. What did he see? What Papa saw through the driving snow was a tiny window within a glow. Pop hardly breathed. He spoke not a word. What he saw through the window was a tiny snowbird, busily trimming his Christmas tree 
with the help of the members of his family. Their tree was a twig decorated with seeds that the tiny snowbirds had collected from weeds. And for the first time that day, Papa saw Christmas in a different way. Maybe it was the tiny twig tree, or maybe the seeds that helped Papa see the other guy's needs. But whatever it was, Pa shouldered his axe and spared the tree. He remembered what Christmas is really about. He'd had it all backwards and inside out. This is a time to be thinking of others. Mamas, papas, sisters, brothers, fellow creatures great and small, fellow creatures one and all said the cubs what about our tree the tree for our bells our bright colored ball and all that stuff in our closets and halls no problem at all there's no need to fuss we'll go back and buy one from grizzly gus grizzly, grizzly gus? gus but papa don't bother me with questions please here now hop to it Put on these skis. So Pop and the Cubs put on skis and went back for one of old Grizzly's trees. But when they got back to the Christmas tree lot, the lot was there, but the trees were not. Only a sign saying, sorry, sold out, and some tired old needles lying about. When Sis saw those needles, well, she thought she might cry. But then, something wondrous caught her eye. Somebody has decorated our house. And somebody had. The chipmunk, the skunk, the crows and the grouse, the eagle, the owl, and all of the others, and quite a few of their sisters and brothers, were returning the kindness Pa showed those snowbirds. The bears, they were speechless. They just had no words. All of the bear's tree things were there. The bangles, the bells, the musical bear, the Christmas tree star, the Santa bear sled. Why, everything's shining! Sister suddenly said. Then, a very special starry light filled the sky that Christmas Eve night. It didn't come from that pink plastic star. It was the light of the Christmas star. The true Christmas spirit shone down that night. It filled the whole sky with a lovely light. It charged the cold, clear, bare country air. It reached the heart of every bear and their fellow creatures, one and all. Nature's creatures, great and small. The Christmas star, it says to us, there's more to Christmas than the fuss. There's kindness, love, and warmth, God bless. Squeezes, hugs, and happiness. The Christmas star, it says to us, there's more to Christmas than the Small. 
not just bears like me and you, but nature's other creatures too. Wiggly worm and platypus, weasel, hippopotamus. Yes, and even people too. They are nature's creatures too. So Merry Christmas to us all. Fellow creatures, one and all. So Merry Christmas, one and all. Fellow creatures, great and small. Merry Christmas, one and others bit. How about the salmon? How about it? Your remark shows wit and perception. But in the case of the salmon, <laughs> it will make an exception. <laughs> Let's celebrate Christmas with a Hanna-Barbera Home Video Holiday Spectacular. You'll love a Jetson Christmas Carol. Join the Jetsons and Mr. Spacely for a festive Christmas party. And you'll enjoy Yogi Bear's all-star comedy Christmas caper. Come along with Yogi Bear and Boo Boo as they reveal the true meaning of Christmas. Now, for a limited time, you can order a Jetson Christmas Carol and Yogi Bear's all-star comedy Christmas caper. Call now and you'll also receive How the Flintstones Saved Christmas. It's going to be a yabba dabba do yule time with these three special holiday videos for $29.95. There's more. With each video, you'll also get a sing-along songbook of favorite Christmas carols. Call now and take Hanna-Barbera home for the holidays with these three special videos. Order now. Call 1-800-237-3000. That's 1-800-237-3000. You'll get three videos and the holiday songbooks. Call now. That's right, kids. It's finished. I created the Monster Lab. It's, it's too gross. First, you put monster flesh on their creepy little bones. Then pour flesh remover into the Monster Lab and bubble off their flab. Too yucky. Look at this nasty guy. The Monster Lab. Watch for time freaks and more gross creations so you too can be a mad scientist. Too gross. Mad balls. Mad balls. Mad balls. Gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball. They're gross. Funny, yucky, sick. There's eight on it. For eight more mad balls. Snake bait. Freaky fullback. Splitting headache. Lock lips. Swine sucker. Bruise brother. Wolf breath. Fist face. We play with a mad ball. We play with a mad ball. Mad ball. Mad ball. Now eight great mad balls are joined by eight great more. So separately from act toy. Mad ball. Hey. It's the toy I still want to this day. Rom. Rom the Space Knight. I will own one one day. Came really close a couple times, but don't have one yet. So, hey. Berenstain Bears. Berenstain, not Berenstain. Berenstain. So. <laughs> but, uh, hope you liked that one. And, um, that's one I had forgotten about. Uh. And then I remember while I was watching this, I'm like, yeah, I, I remember that. I, 
why that why that was not a, a regular cartoon that aired every year at Christmas time I don't know but we're gonna keep this morning Christmas train going and uh, people have asked for it so uh, I'm doing Archie's weird mysteries it is the Christmas Phantom episode uh, it's funny because because some some of the Archie weird Archie tales, um, but I believe it's now because it's now on HBO Max. Uh, so that's I think that's what the deal is. I don't know, but here you guys go. Archie's Christmas Phantom. Enjoy. Who was the mysterious figure in red that is stalking Archie? Can Archie find out before Christmas in Riverdale is ruined, or will Archie and Riverdale fall victim to the horror of the Christmas Phantom? Mr. Bailey, there's nothing down here to be frightened of, unless you count the Christmas Phantom, that is. <laughs> mm. But of course, everyone knows the Christmas Phantom is no more real than Santa Claus. What are you talking about, Mr. Lodge? What Christmas Phantom? You haven't heard the story? Thirty years ago, on Christmas Eve, the large department store burned to the ground, leaving only this very basement intact. Some say it's haunted. The mystery is, the store Santa Claus vanished that very same night. Chris Nicholas was his name. Rumor has it, he's the Christmas Phantom. I ask you, Mr. Bailey, have you ever heard such superstitious nonsense before in your life? <laughs> uh, no, sir. Now, let's find that Santa Claus suit. Surprise! The costume's in here. Come on, the kids are waiting. Now, don't open my gift until Christmas morning, Mr. Weatherby. How much longer is it going to take Archie to finish up? This is taking forever. Boy, I love Christmas. What? No snow yet? Oh, well, maybe later. It always snows in time for Christmas in Riverdale. We've been waiting 45 minutes for you, Archie. I just had to make sure everybody at Riverdale High got their gifts. And you mean everybody. What can I say? I like Christmas. Big huh? deal. We all like Christmas. Especially all the presents we'll be getting. And all that delicious Christmas food. 
And all the babysitting money I'll make when all those moms and dads go Christmas shopping. Don't forget all those bargains in the after Christmas sales. But what about spending quality time with friends and family? Face it, Arch. Everyone knows the best thing about Christmas is the eats. <sighs> what about the spirit of giving? It's fun to get, too. Admit it, Archie, there's got to be something you really want for Christmas. Come on, fess up. What did you ask Santa to get you this year? Well... I knew it. I really wanted to start off the new year with a fantastic weird mystery for my column. Christmas is almost here, and so far Santa hasn't come through with anything. The poor boy has Christmas and weird mysteries on the brain. Oh, Archikins, all this talk of giving must mean you're about to buy me a really expensive gift for Christmas, right? Uh, well, actually, I'm broke. I spent all my money on gifts for Mr. Weatherby and the others at school. Huh? Andrews, you're hopeless. You lavish gifts on them. <laughs> but you're going to neglect me? Hmm. What do you want? Oh, hi, Daddy. Veronica, my Santa Claus just flipped out and quit on me. He said the Christmas tree attacked him. Do you know any suckers, uh, responsible teenagers that need to make some chump change this Christmas? Oh, do I? But make sure you tell him about the tree thing first. It's for you, Archikins. Hello? Really? I'll be right there. Thanks, Mr. Lodge. Looks like there's a Santa Claus after all. Mr. Lodge is a really weird mystery for me. Oh, and he offered me a job, too. I start right now. Archie, Christmas is our most profitable time of the year. I can't take a chance on having the customers frightened off. I'm trusting you to get to the bottom of this weird mystery. You can count on me, sir. I'll be the best undercover operative you've ever had. I'd rather you be the best Santa I've ever had. Tis the season to make money, you know. All uh, right. So this is the homicidal pine tree? Yes, this is the conifer that supposedly attacked Mr. Bailey. Or at least that's what he said when he quit. Funny how no one saw it happen except him. But you're used to things like that, right, Andrews? Absolutely. Weird mysteries are us, sir. Good, because whatever happens, you have to stay calm and keep the kids happy. Speaking of which... You don't look too dangerous to me. Now behave yourself. Children are counting on me. Let's give it a try. Ho, ho, ho! What do you want for Christmas, little boy? This is going to be a lot of fun. Ho, ho, ho! Come, children, Santa is waiting. <laughs> this has been the most profitable shopping day in the Lodge Department store's history. Well, Archie, you did much better than I expected. And I see the Christmas tree kept its branches to itself. <laughs> yeah, I think that Bailey fellow made it all up. You know, Mr. Lodge, I can't believe how greedy kids are these days. Christmas is supposed to be about good cheer. <sighs> what am I going to be like after a whole Christmas season of this? Lodge Department Store, Santa speaking. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Why, hello, Santakins. I hope you're bringing me plenty of gifts this year. Oh, hi, Veronica. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, little boy. You're still going to be able to make it to the Christmas Eve party tonight, aren't you? We're going to be closing in five minutes. I'll come over as soon as I'm done here. Please don't do that. Santa bruises easily. Attention shoppers, the Lodge Department Store is now closed for business. Be sure to drop by for our special after Christmas sale. Have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow, little fellow. <sighs> Must have dozed off. Oops, almost forgot the presents I got for everyone.
crate. Someone turned off the lights. I can't see a thing. Let me out! Wonderful. I'm stuck here overnight. Wait a minute. The store is closed tomorrow. I'll be trapped here till after Christmas. What's that? Now I'm hearing things. It can't get any worse than this. I have all the luck. I'm going to spend all of Christmas inside this department store. Wait a minute. What am I thinking? I can just make a phone call for help. The line is dead. Everyone's going to be so busy eating and opening presents, they won't even notice I'm gone. What are you guys doing in here? They're about to bob for apples on the veranda. We're waiting for Archie to show up. Uh, he's probably running late. Come on, Jughead, there's plenty of food on the buffet tables. No, not yet. I always wait for Archie to make his Christmas toast. Then I eat. It's a Christmas tradition for me. What about you, Veronica? Lots of presents under the tree waiting for you. Oh, half the fun is Archikin's watching me open the presents. He enjoys that so much. <sighs> make room for me. You're right. Christmas just isn't the same without Archie. There's got to be some way to get out of here. Huh? Huh? I don't know what is going on here, but I'm going to find out. Ugh! Oh well, here goes nothing. Welcome, Archie Andrews. We've <gasps> been waiting for you. Please join us. So, <gasps> on second thought, don't mind if I do. There's no answer at Archie's house. I'm really beginning to get worried. Veronica, dear, how did you convince Archie to not sing all those Christmas carols out of key this year? Actually, Archie hasn't shown up yet. Too bad. I hate to admit it, but I was actually beginning to enjoy those lousy carols. I guess they grow on you. He's not at home, either. I could have sworn everyone was out of the store when I locked up. Daddy, I'm really worried. We need to go look for Archikins. I think you're right. I suppose Archie is just like all those Christmas carols he sings. Really annoying, but you miss him when he's not around. Come on, everyone. Archie needs us. <laughs> Ow! Who are you? You can call me the Christmas Phantom. According to legend, I was once known as Chris Nicholas, the large department store's Santa Claus, 30 years ago. Just like you were this year's Santa. It was a good life until tragedy struck, forcing me to huh? wear this mask and hide myself from mortal eyes. Since then, I have watched as Christmas changed into a holiday of greed and selfishness. For the past few days, I've watched and marveled at your patience and generosity and warmth. You alone still possess the true spirit of Christmas, Archie Andrews. Thanks, but it really isn't that big a deal. And Modest, too. The only one in Riverdale. Riverdale! Bah! Riverdale doesn't deserve Christmas! That's a little harsh. No, it isn't. 
That's why I'm going to take Christmas away from Riverdale. Really? And how are you going to do that? With this book of spells that helped me bring all these inanimate objects to life. I'll have them take every trace of Christmas from Riverdale. Not if I can find a spell to stop you. Ugh. And I thought you of all people would understand, Archie Andrews. Bring him to me. to do is find the spell to change that Christmas tree and those toy robots back to normal. Huh? Sapling? I said you were big for a sapling. Really? What's up, folks? Archie's missing and we're looking for him. That's terrible. I'll help you look. Remember when we had that bad storm last Christmas and the phone lines went down? Archie found an old ham radio so I could talk with my sister on the holiday. Christmas just isn't the same without Archie. We're beginning to realize that. Nothing can stop me from taking Christmas from Riverdale. Please don't do this. Sure, maybe a lot of people have forgotten what Christmas is really about, but there's always a chance that they will remember. So, what's your point? Don't you see? If we take away Christmas, you take away any hope that people might one day respect it more. Isn't that what Christmas is really all about? Hope? Hope, huh? Okay, Archie Andrews, I'll make you a deal. You give up your Christmas, and the rest of Riverdale can keep theirs. We'll see how serious you are about this. You mean... That's right. No presents to give, no presents to get. You'll spend Christmas alone while everyone else has a good time. What do you say? Do we have a deal? But I keep the book. Sure. Consider it a present. Read it sometime. It's a classic. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. He tricked me. Christmas never was in danger. At least he unlocked the door. There he is! Archikins! We've looked everywhere. You guys were looking for me instead of enjoying the Christmas Eve party? I'm sorry I ruined your Christmas Eve. Hey, buddy, knowing you're safe makes it a good Christmas. Good to have you back, pal. We're just glad you're okay. We missed you, Archikins. Mm -hmm. Huh? My turn. Huh? Mm -hmm. Wait, I left my presents in the store. I'll be right back. Hurry up. I am hosting a party, you know. And if you want to sing any of those Christmas carols of yours, I won't complain. Wow, I'll have to get lost more often. I gotta 
no. What? It can't be! Afraid so, Archie. You don't expect me to believe that you're the real Santa Claus. Archie, you believe in ghosts, werewolves, aliens, and monsters. Why is it so hard to believe the real Santa Claus would come to Riverdale? But why here? Someone needed a Christmas lesson. Me? Oh, no, you're fine. It was your friends who needed a reminder of what is really important about Christmas. A Christmas Eve without you did the trick. Then why all the scary stuff? The Christmas Phantom and Chris Nicholas and the spooky tree and the robots. Don't you remember? You asked for a really weird mystery for Christmas. You have to admit, this was a good one. The mysterious Phantom of the Department Store stealing Christmas in Riverdale. Yeah, now that you mention it, it was a really great weird mystery. Thanks. Hey, does Santa deliver or what? Well, I've got my list and I've got to go. It's a work night. Here, let us help you with those. It's snowing. This is going to be a perfect Christmas. There's nothing wrong with gifts and a big fancy dinner, but the best thing about the holiday season is sharing time with your loved ones, making someone smile with your generosity, and appreciating all the fine people in your life. That's something I always try to remember when I celebrate Christmas in a little town called Riverdale. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. sold separately. Color Blaster! It's a blast! Kitty Surprise is hiding! Look, she has baby kitty! Surprise, surprise, it's kitty surprise! How many kitties are there in time? Three baby kitties! They're all so cute! It could be three or four or five! I love kitty! Surprise, surprise, it's kitty surprise! Four kitties! With beautiful baby kitties inside! Five kitties all different! Surprise, surprise, Surprise comes with three, four, five baby kitties. One and four comes with four or five. Each sold separately. What? I, like I said, recently I became a sucker for Archie, and I don't know why. And uh, all the old cartoons, I kind of went back and rewatched them. They're fun. I don't think there's one that's not fun. So here we go. We're gonna go back to the to to I get not Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, we're doing the Christmas Tree Train with Buttons and Rusty. Um, they've appeared in other cartoons. Uh, a lot of, lot of those uh, like Good Times videos. Those were what this stuff ends up on. So, <clears throat> this is Buttons and Rusty's Christmas Tree Train from 1983. Enjoy. <laughs> Christmas tree train is coming, bringing trees for all the kids. Oh, the little puffer belly shakes a lot like jelly. See the smoke come from the stack as the chug chug chugs along the track to bring the trees, the Christmas trees. My mountains are beautiful this time of year. The late autumn breeze piles up the leaves. The first patches of snow are on the ground. 
And the happy whistle of the Christmas tree train reminds me that Christmas is coming. You say you never heard of the Christmas tree train? Well, <laughs> my forest is where all the best Christmas trees are grown, you see. And that old train brings the lumberjacks who cut the trees that wind up in your living rooms each Christmas. <laughs> well, you didn't think they grew in the city, now did you? I never rode on that old rattler, but a couple of my friends did just last year about this time. And, well, that turned out to be some train ride, let me tell you. But on second thought, let them tell you. It's their story. Uh, uh. Fat little bear cub is Buttons. Hey, Buttons, wait till you see what the ranger's doing. And that's his little pal, Rusty. Oh, and the ranger? Yeah, that's me, Ranger Jones. But most folks just call me Jonesy. Is he leaving on that train, Rusty? No, and I'm not gonna tell you. You've gotta see it to believe it. Mmm, smells like winter is here. Oh, lots of snow on the ridge, Bridget. Mama, can I go over to the ranger's cabin with Rusty? Well, all right, but stay away from the railroad tracks. And Rusty, I'm serving supper in 30 minutes. Gee, thanks, Mom. We won't be long. <sighs> oh, excuse me, Rosie. I guess it's getting close to hibernation time. <laughs> Sounds like Abner's hibernating already. <laughs> Terrific. I've got a whole winter of that buzz saw to look forward to. Bridget, you've got to do something about Abner's snoring. Now, George, nobody complains when you snore. Yeah, well, I don't snore for three months like he does. <laughs> Abner, wake up. It's time to go to bed. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. Oh, gosh. Is it spring already? <laughs> See, Buttons? Isn't that nifty? Well, if it isn't Buttons, I'd have thought you'd be sleeping by now. Gee, Willikers, what are all the lights for, Mr. Jones? Yeah, I thought the lights were just for the inside of a cabin. Those are Christmas lights. I always put them up this time of year so Santa Claus can find me. Who is Sandy Claus? Yeah, sounds like a bear with dirty nails. <laughs> Santa Claus is a jolly little man who lives at the North Pole. And he brings people presents once every year, you see. Presents? What are presents? Come on inside and I'll show you. These are a few Christmas presents I bought for my grandchildren. A rocking horse for Jeffrey. Gosh! And for Jennifer. An old-fashioned jack-in-the-box. Here, push the red button. <laughs> hey, don't be scared. It's only a toy. Buttons? Rusty? I didn't mean to scare you. Buttons! Rusty! Come back, guys! Phew! Is that thing following us? <laughs> I don't think so. We better get started for home. Let's go. No, wait. I'm too tired to move right now. On second thought, let's run for it. My feet won't move. Oh, where are those children? Oh, I just hope they're smart enough to stay at the ranger's cabin till the storm blows over. <laughs> oh, knock it off, Abner. That was pretty stupid, me running into a garbage can. Well, that was a stupid place to leave a garbage can. Wake up, Abner! Abner, wake up! 
Huh? Oh, was I snoring again? The children are missing. Abner, they're somewhere out in that storm. Don't worry, ladies. George and I'll find them. Uh, they were headed for the ranger's cabin. I wonder if they ever got there. Well, I guess I'm too late for supper. How can you think of food at a time like this? It helps keep my mind off of being lost. Just one more tree that I'm heading for the barn, Jack. Must be a farmer. Come on. <laughs> Yippee! He'll know the way to the ranger's cabin. <laughs> there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, what was that noisy thing? Uh oh we're moving. This whole bunch of trees is moving. Keep it coming, Jack. That way. That man is moving the tree. Wow, what a strong guy. Okay, Jack, put him in number 10. That's your last load. Okay, take her away. Rusty, I think we've been locked in a cage. And the cage is moving. They're taking us away somewhere. Maybe to one of those zoo places. Help! Somebody help! In a moment, the president will be throwing the switch on our national Christmas tree. And isn't that beautiful? Coming. Huh, who on earth could that be at this hour? Ranger, it's George and Abner. <laughs> Well, hi, fellas. Uh, come on in. I guess the children told you about their Christmas decorations. So they were here. Well, yeah. Y you mean they didn't... Well, they didn't come home, Jonesy. Did they say anything about where they were going? No. They just ran off sudden-like. You see, I was showing them this jack-in-the-box Come and... on, Jonesy. We gotta find those kids before they get lost. What about Abner? I'm afraid he's just gonna hibernate on your couch. Rusty, I don't mind telling you, I'm scared. Don't worry, Buttons. Remember, I'm a fox. We're supposed to be pretty smart about getting out of messes like this. Ooh. <laughs> what, what, what was that? <laughs> Somebody said who. Who's that? Who said that who? <laughs> that's me. That's who. An owl. How did you get in here? I thought I was flying into a barn, but it turned out to be a boxcar. <laughs> I thought we were in a cave. Yeah, what's a, a boxcar? <laughs> it's just a big box on wheels. Every freight train pulls boxcars. Pulls them where? Well, being as how this one's full of Christmas trees, I figure we're heading for the big city. Gosh, I never thought I'd get to the big city. What's it like there? Take it from me, kids. It's a real jungle. The big city's a crazy forest of buildings and cars and people. Heck, we ought to be right at home in a forest. Speaking of home... No, Jonesy, those children know better than to tip over a litter can. Well, two small animals ran this way and... Uh-oh. Looky here. Those are fox prints running down the slope. They're Rusty's paw prints, all right, but what happened to Buttons? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Sheepers, he must have been running awful fast. It's a big train. <laughs> you know, for two wild animals, you two sure scare easy. That's amazing! That train went right through us! Buttons! Rusty! They wouldn't have taken the train, would they? Hmm, it's just possible. Come on, let's get to a telephone. And they scream and holler at each other and push and shove. So whatever you do, stay away from humans, especially the ones driving automobiles. Gee, and they call us wild animals. Switch in yard. What? I can hardly hear you. 
Has the Christmas tree train pulled in yet? Should be arriving in a minute. If you find a couple of stowaways... What throwaways? Speak up! A bear and a fox? Are you serious? Oh, just little cubs. <laughs> okay, Ranger, I'll be on the lookout for them. Now remember, you two. The minute they open the door, you follow me. Okay, but how are you gonna know which train is going back home? See that train way over there? Its engine is pointing in the direction we want to go. Uh-oh, here comes somebody. Shh, get back and get ready. Charlie, you check number nine. I'll take the others. Oh, it's an eagle! Hey, you stowaways, come back here! Stop those two animals! Charlie, pull it off, catcher! They got away! see any jungle out there. There aren't even any trees. Goodbye, Mr. Owl. Gee, Buttons, I wonder if we'll ever find our way back home. Rusty, what do we do now? Well, those men won't let us near the trains. We'll just have to walk home. That looks like the only trail. Let's get going. Did you ever see such tall cabins? Jeepers! That, that must be some kind of city animal. Maybe if we could find him, he'd tell us how to get home. Hey, that man kind of looks like Jonesy. I'll bet he knows the way to our forest. Say, mister, could you... Close one, thanks, Rusty. I, I guess city people don't like rivers hiding it away like this. Maybe they don't know it's down here. Ooh, this place gives me the creeps. Let's get out of here. People sure aren't very friendly. I'm getting awful hungry, Rusty. <coughs> Do you think they'd mind if we joined them for breakfast? Come on, maybe they can tell us how to get home. Hi, would you mind if we... <coughs> Where, where do you think we are? That was a train, I think. How come city people hide everything underground? I guess they don't like trains either. Uh. We're gonna be squashed! Jump! Buttons, say something! Boy, I sure am hungry. We gotta get out of here. I get the feeling we're not very welcome here. I wish we had that sign with us. The one Jonesy put up in the park? Yeah, be kind to animals. Yeah! I don't see any people, Buttons. Let's make a run for it. Run for what? All we've been doing is run, run, run. And I haven't seen any way out of this crazy place. Well, we can't just sit here for goodness sake. We gotta keep looking for a trail back home. What is it this time? It's a man with a big knife. Rusty, there's no place to run. Why don't they label these dumb boxes? How am I supposed to know which department they go to? Ready? Here's those stuffed animals for the toy department. Good. I've been looking all over for them. Hey, give me a hand with this load of catch you wear. <sighs> 
That little bear looks like you. Watch yourselves up there. Lie real still. Maybe they'll think we're stuffed. <laughs> now, is that any way to treat expensive toys, Barney? Man, this teddy bear looks almost real. <laughs> My, aren't you a cute little thing? <laughs> Look at this one, Gramps. How about those eyes? <laughs> you saved me a half a dozen of each of those, Barney. They're going to be a big hit with some of my customers. Poor old guy. He acts like he believes he's really Santa Claus. Alice, make room in the zoo. Don't tell me you found the teddy bears. Yep, just for that, I'll let you buy me coffee. They're being put in the zoo. Well, at least they feed you in the zoo. Boy, am I hungry. <gasps> Barney! Would you look at this darling teddy bear? <laughs> I knew you'd flip when you saw him. And this adorable fox. Gee, what a nifty toy. Can I hold that funny little fat one? I want to play with him. Well, I'll let you hold one for a minute, but be very careful. <laughs> <laughs> Barney, that's a real bear. Holy cow, and a real fox. Hey, stop those wild animals. Let's check the cafeteria. Animals can't resist food. Did you hear that, Buttons? Food. Oh, boy. Those little devils. Pardon me, but have you seen a little bear and a little fox in here? Uh, no. Gertrude. Someone's taken our lunch. Rusty? Yeah? Are we dreaming or are we back home? It's a tiny forest, but look at all the toys. Well, <sighs> now that we've had supper, I better curl up here and... <sighs> Hold it. Now don't you start hibernating. Buttons? Buttons? Oh, no. I'm going to dim the lights in Winter Wonderland if you're throwing there. Okay, Harry. Wow. Well, at least that gives us a little hope. Thanks for calling. The station master tried to stop them when they ran out of the Christmas tree train. Surely somebody will find them and... Oh, dear. They're there, Bridget. If I wasn't on duty, I'd go down there and look for him. <laughs> Siri, boss, I think this is the prettiest one we've done in years. Gee, I'm kind of nervous. There's a whole lot of people counting on us to win first prize this year. Well, good luck, boss. Shall I turn them on now? Hit it, Harry. It's a great surprise when you open up your eyes and the dreams that you dream appear. It's snowing, it's snowing, winter time's here. Angels spent the night sprinkling little flakes of white all around just to bring good cheer. Winter time's here We're safe from the storm Here inside it's nice and warm The fireplace is burning bright We'll all dance around Cause there's snow upon the ground A wonderful delight That happened overnight The trees are bending low with the weight of fallen snow It's a miracle that comes each year It's snowing, it's snowing Winter time's here It's snowing And 
it looks like Stacy's department store has come up with a real winner this year. We don't know who on earth made those incredibly lifelike animal toys, but... Rosie, George, look! It's snowing! It's the children! Where are they? What is that place? It's a store in the city. Say, I think I know a man who works there this time of year. Winter times here. Who? Ranger Jones? Oh, Jonesy. Well, my, my, it's been a long time. Yeah, uh, what? The window? Really? I bet those whiskers are fake. They're real? Well, I thought they were different when they were delivered. I knew they were fake whiskers. <laughs> sure thing, Jonesy. Happy to help you out. Have a Merry Christmas! Miracle that comes each year It's snowing It's snowing Buttons? Rusty? Oh, come on! I'm going to take you home! Oh, my goodness! Well, my little furry friends, it's a bit early for this trick. But this is a special delivery, huh? <laughs> now, don't be afraid. This is going to be fun. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! And up we go! We've got a little practice run to make, gang. <laughs> I'm a little rusty after 12 months. In 12 months, you'll be a big rusty. Not bad for a bear. On Donner! On Blitzen! Jonesy, I appreciate what you're trying to do for us, but this Sandy Claus guy, I don't know. Hush, George, we have to believe in him. Wake up, Abner. That's what I call a real friend. Buttons. Rusty. Abner, wake up, Abner. Huh? What's going on? Is it... Spring. No, it's Merry Christmas! A little bit early! Ho, ho, ho! Uh, I must be dreaming. And a Happy New Year! The Christmas tree train is coming, bringing trees for all the kids. Now the train's highballing with the trees, it's all in. See the smoke come from the stack as the chug, chug, chugs along the track. Hear the whistle blowing loud and clear. Telling everyone the Christmas tree train is here. Radio Shack. We get the kids some terrific gifts at Radio Shack. Four exciting, safe, battery-powered toys. A sturdy fire chief's helmet with flashing light and siren. And three authentically styled vehicles. Easily programmed for six different driving maneuvers, including straight, zigzag, circle, or square. Those toys sure got their attention. They still have more packages to around. Exciting battery-powered toys. $6.99 and $7.99 each. Only at Radio Shack. It was a bit before Christmas and all through the house, nothing was stirring, not even a... I ran to the kitchen. What could it be? Christmas crunch from the captain to me. This crunch is special to make breakfast merry. It's loaded with yummy red and green crunch berries. Very sweet. Delicious. But it's only here till Christmas. Christmas crunch is a merry part of this balanced breakfast. Now Captain Crunch has every kid on his Christmas list. Wow. One secret present on each box of Christmas crunch from the captain to you. Merry Christmas. Up and hills, down and tails, as we hit the dusty trail, on the end we go marching along. We are fast, we are boss, we've got guts and squish and squash, army and we go marching along. Army and then it's high, high knee for the anarchy. Shout out your voice loud and strong. Happy! For wherever we go, look at how we go, army and we go marching along. Army and Solid squadrons of three and eight from half. Tell you what, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm still a sucker for the black Spider-Man suit. Just something cool about that. I've got the 
Secret Wars figure over there. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed Buttons and Rusty Christmas Tree Train. Um, yeah, th that was a cartoon that up until recently, man, I remember them now. I, I didn't remember them until, you know, Hall the Halloween episode. And then this pops up and I'm like, I can't remember them now. Yeah, about my time period. So, all right. Now we're going to the one that I legitimately only put on here because... I love the name because uh, it caught me. It's one of the ones where you're like scanning stuff and all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, that, that, that's the one right there. Uh, and we're doing Christmas Dinosaur. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think you get any further um, Christmas and dinosaurs. But this that's literally why it caught me. It's from 2004, so it's not even that old. I mean, I guess it's, you know, whew. Wow. Okay, never mind. 2004 is 18 years ago. That is, uh, that is not relatively recently. I'm old, and sometimes that takes a second to sink in. Uh, so, here you guys go. I, I want you guys to go in. This is Christmas Dinosaur from 2004. Enjoy. Till the big day, huh? One short week, 1,000 packages to deliver for Santa. Check it out, Jason. Your favorite cookie cutter. Uh, last time I checked, I didn't have a favorite cookie cutter. Remember? I bought this little brontosaurus for you last year. Mom, that's a platyosaurus. Even Tommy knows that. <coughs> knows what? You eat any more raw cookie dough, Tommy, and you're gonna get worms. How'd you like that for Christmas? Isn't that what the little spaz got last year? Jason, your brother's not a little spaz. You're right, Dad. He's a big spaz. Well, everyone, looks like we're creating another perfect Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it! Coming! Ah, special delivery here for a Mr. Uh, Jason Barnes. Oh, that's you! Awesome! I got a package! What do you get for me? Ah, sorry, Tommy, nothing today. But I bet the big guy has a few packages coming for you next week. Just sign here, Jason, and it's all yours. <laughs> Careful there, pretty heavy box. Thanks, Pete. Wow! Look how big it is, Jason! I wonder who it's from. Good question, Jason. No return address. Aunt Tess said her gift to Jason was coming in the mail. I bet it's a Robosaurus! That's what I told Aunt Tess I wanted. That's what you told everyone you wanted. Can I open it now, please? If Jason gets to open a present, I get to open one too! Nobody is opening anything until Christmas. Dad! Come on, Dad! Now, let's go finish those cookies. We got a Robosaurus for Christmas! I got a Robosaurus for Christmas, and if you hadn't opened your big mouth, I'd be playing with it right now! Well, we can play with it on Christmas. It's only a week away. You can't ever play with it, Tommy. It's mine! And you'll just break it, like you break everything else. Mom! Jason won't let me play with his Robosaurus! Tommy, 
Jason doesn't have a Robosaurus. And if you guys don't knock it off, I'm gonna make you eat every one of these Christmas cookies. Yeah. But Aunt Tess got me the Robosaurus, and Grandma gets me the T-Rex Annihilator game, then Mom and Dad must have gotten me the Build Your Own Brachiosaurus kit. That's if Aunt Tess really did get me the Robosaurus. Just what do you think you're doing? I was just, uh, looking at the tree. Well, why don't you just, uh, head back up to bed? And in the future, sport, watch out for the step by the landing. It's a creaker. Your father's at the office, Jason. And I've got to run a few errands, so I want you to watch Tommy. Mom! I had to watch him last Saturday. It's not like I'm selling you into slavery, Jason. I'll only be an hour or so. And Mom says I can watch Adventures of Cozy Cup. Mom! It's on at the same time as Dino Wranglers. He got to watch his stupid show last week. Jason, he's only seven. Please don't give me a hard time about this. I'm only seven? Yeah, well, Cozy Cub is for three-year-olds. <gasps> I'll be back in a little while, guys. Mwah. Mwah. And no peeking under the tree. Go watch your show. I'll be in my room, and I don't want you bugging me. Got it? Got it! You're hopeless. Hey, kids. Miss Blue Jay just stopped by to say a big good morning to all of you. Can you say good morning to Miss Blue Jay? I know you can. She's going to bring us down to Rainbow Canyon so we can tell Fergie the Frog about yesterday's adventure. Come on, Robosaurus! Is it gonna be thundering T-Rex or slamming Stegosaurus? What? That's not a Robosaurus. An egg? What kind of stupid Christmas present is that? Genuine Quetzal coatless egg. Order of pterosaurs. Taken from Dinosaur Glen deep in the Rocky Mountains. Give me a break. Pterosaurs have been extinct for 145 million years. How stupid can you get? Jason, I spilled my juice on the... Wow, where'd you get that? Tommy, get out! I, I told you to leave me alone. That's a dinosaur egg? Yeah, Brainiac, it's a dinosaur egg. And any minute now, it's gonna hatch, and a real-life dinosaur's gonna eat you up. Get a clue, Tommy. It's a fake. Doesn't look fake to me. What kind of dinosaur is inside? Duh, the fake kind. But since you're so interested, I'll show you. Come on, show me what kind of dinosaur it is. 
I'm looking! I was just asking! <gasps> uh, Jason? I said I'm looking, Tommy. Give me a sec. Oh, no! <sighs> Jason! Come here! <sighs> Tommy! Grab it! Don't let it... <gasps> You are so lucky it didn't break. Help me get this thing back in its box and under the tree before Mom gets home. Uh, I'm sorry, Jason. It started rolling. Oh! And, uh... Jason! Uh, what's happening? This is impossible. It's hatching. What's in there? According to the card, this! Run! Uh, what are we gonna do, Jason? It's gonna eat us! Don't worry. They don't eat people, I, I think. Mm -hmm. oh. Can't believe this! It's a real pterosaur! not gonna take me without a fight! Wow! wants to hurt us. Oh! Okay, boy. Get down. Go on. Down. Good boy. If you are a boy. He looks like a boy to me. Maybe we should name him. Good idea. You want a name? I'm Tommy. Me, Tommy. Him, Jason. Jason, Tommy. And you're... Spot! Spot? Sounds like a pretty good name. Awesome! We have a dinosaur named Spot! <laughs> Spot, no! It's okay! Is he alright? You okay, Spot? I'm sorry, Spot. I was just clapping, that's all. It's good! Spot, what is it? Jason, I think he's hungry. Is that it, Spot? You hungry? Let's go see what's in the fridge. <gasps> Spot, no! No eating the Christmas tree! No, Spot! That's bad! No! Help me turn this around, will you? Oh, no! Spot! Spot, no! Bad dinosaur! Those are Dad's fish! Don't eat Dad's fish! Good boy! Pterosaurs, of course! He's a fish eater! Dinner is served. He likes fish sticks. I guess we should nuke another box. Ah! Okay, okay, Spot. Give me a sec. Mom's home! We've got to hide him. Spot, get upstairs quick. Ah! 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 Spot, no! Upstairs! We've got to go upstairs. Spot, that way, move! Ah! Here, 
spot in here. In the closet. Whoa! Under the bed. <laughs> Stay there, Spot. Until I say you can move, stay there. Keep an eye on him. <gasps> huh? What are you doing? Just looking at the tree. Again? Where's your brother? Uh, uh upstairs. You haven't been watching him at all, have you, Jason? He could have climbed down the laundry chute again, for all we know. Mom! Tommy is fine! You don't need to check on him like a little kid! Have you lost your mind? Last time we left Tommy alone, he finger-painted the piano. Tommy! I'm home! I'm in here, Mom! What are you doing in your brother's room? Just playing. You haven't destroyed anything? You were actually letting your brother play in your room? Sure, why not? You must have a fever. You're acting very strange. I've got groceries to put away. <sighs> that was close. Coast is clear, Spot! Oh! That was Mom. Every time you see Mom, you hide. Good spot. Mom will never find out. Jason? Tommy? Get down here! Now! I suppose nobody knows anything about this. Uh, you see... Well, we were... We were wrestling. I started it. Well, you're gonna finish it. Clean this up. And no more knockdown in the house. After we clean this up, maybe we should spend the rest of the day upstairs. It's my job to say that. For the rest of the day, you'll play upstairs. And don't come crying to me when you run out of fun things to do. We won't! Promise! Dad are down there, Spot, so I couldn't nuke these. I hope you don't mind that they're not warm. Here's some salmon, Spot. Just give me a second to <laughs> unwrap it. Oh, you're gonna like these frozen shrimp. Let's see what you've learned so far. Okay, Spot, sit. <laughs> That's good! Now give me a wing! Roll over! Play dead! Now... Boys, it's just about bedtime. Hide! Spot, go on, hide! Why is this door locked? Uh, uh, hold on, Dad! Oh, here. Now hide, quick! Unlock this door now, Jason! Spot, remember, stay. Sorry, I must have locked it by accident when I closed it.
You know I don't like it when you guys lock the door. Now bedtime. Can I sleep in here with Jason? I'm sure your brother doesn't want you sleeping in here. It's fine. No big deal. <laughs> See you guys in the morning. You don't mind your little brother sleeping in your room? Maybe there's something in the drinking water. Tell me about it. They've been acting weird all day. Let me get some extra sheets. That's okay. He can take my sleeping bag. I'll set it up. Is that a bag of shrimp in your hand? I, uh... Why can't you just eat junk food, like normal kids? Here, I saved one for you. That was a little too close. I guess we're having a sleepover. You guys get the floor. Night spot. Night spot. Mm. Night, Jason. Night, Tommy. Mm. Boys, get out of bed. You're gonna be late for school. Uh, uh. Huh? Tommy, look at this! What happened to Spot? He got big. I'm gonna eat fish sticks every day. Spot, no! That's my favorite pillow! Tommy, what are we gonna do with him? We can't just leave him here while we go to school. You're right! He'll trash the place! And Mom will find him up here. We've got to put him somewhere else. How about the treehouse? That's not a bad idea. He can't ruin it. He can make noise and Mom won't hear him. It's a little cold out there, but we can fix that. <coughs> Spot, we're going to school. And you're going on a little trip. You guys better hustle. The bus will be here any minute. Mom, can I have jelly on that? Tommy, it's baloney. I know. I, I like it with jelly. That's how Peter Well eats it. Jelly on bologna? What next? I want the grape jelly, Mom. It's in the back. Of course. Who wants strawberry jelly with bologna? <laughs> Silly me. Is there a draft in here? Uh, Mom, the fridge is open. Before Christmas. Come on, Spot! It's just snow. What's that kid up to now? Here in the treehouse. Hey, 
Hello? Mary, this is Henrietta Delancey next door. I just saw your boy Jason in your backyard. Henrietta, Jason is upstairs getting ready for school. I just saw him in your backyard with a dinosaur! Oh, really? Jason's in the backyard with a dinosaur? And Tommy's in the front yard playing hopscotch with a rhinoceros. What? I'm serious this time, Mary. You were serious when you saw Mr. Peterson sailing his yacht down the street, too. Oh! Why, I never! Everyone in this neighborhood has been against me from the start. First when the alien landed on my roof, nobody believed me, and now... I'm going to school, Spot, and you've got to stay here. Stay here. Yes? No! I'll be back at three. Be good. I'll check to make sure that Jason is upstairs, but I'm sure we have nothing to worry about. The front door! That woman drinks just a little too much coffee. What are you doing in here? Um, looking at the Christmas tree. You really like that tree, huh? Come on, the bus will be here in a second. Whoa! There are 50 states in the United States of America. Each state has its own state capital, state bird, state motto, state flower, State flag, state nickname, state fish. There are nine known planets in the solar system. Each of these nine planets revolves around the sun. The last planet in our solar system, Pluto, is also the smallest of the planets. Although this newborn pterosaur can fit in the palm of your hand, it will double in size in the first month of its life. <laughs> yeah, right. They're bigger than that. By the time it's full grown, the pterosaur will be the size of a private airplane. I've got a new friend, Pete. I could tell you who he is, but it's a secret. I won't tell. His name is Spot, and he's a flying dinosaur! Nah, there's no such thing as real dinosaurs, Tommy. Dinosaurs have been extinguished forever. Hey, Tommy, I heard you still sleep with the lights on. Leave me alone, Joey. <gasps> you scared of me? Like you're scared of the dark? I'm not scared of the dark. Leave me alone, dog breath. Come on, Tommy, let's go. What'd you call me? Just leave me alone! Ugh. Ugh. Where are you going? <sighs> leave me alone! Don't walk away from me! <laughs> Whoa! Jason, can you get the curtains? <gasps> Need us round the back. Oh, wow, it's bright out there. Rinse up the water. I, it's true. I saw a dinosaur. I'm sure your parents will be happy to hear what you've come up with this time. Rinse up the water. It's true. I really saw a dinosaur. Mom's picking us up today, Bert! 
Mom would kill you if she saw you flying in the air like that. It wasn't my idea. It was Spots. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Today we can play all day. We brought you breakfast. What's wrong with him, Jason? Beats me. But it's trout, your favorite. <sighs> Doing a little reading on your family history spot? <sighs> Maybe that's why he's so sad. He misses his family. But he's never even seen his family before. He's seen our family. You want to see your family, Spot? Mm -hmm. Well, it is Christmas Eve. And everyone wants to be with their family at Christmas. Even dinosaurs. <coughs> All we have to do is take him home! There's just one problem. Where's that? I'll be right back. This card came with the egg. Taken from Dinosaur Glen, deep in the Rocky Mountains. I've never heard of a place called Dinosaur Glen. Give me that card. Look at this. Of course! 
Mars, deep in the Rocky Mountains, Dinosaur Glen. Why can't I go with you? Because I said so, Tommy. It's Christmas Eve. You've got to stay here to make sure Mom and Dad don't notice that I'm gone. What if you don't get back in time for Christmas? And miss Christmas with my dorky little brother? No way. You better come back. Mom and Dad are gonna freak if they find out you're gone. I'm counting on you to hold them off till I get back, okay? Don't worry. I won't let you down. That's good, Tommy. Spot won't let me fall. You ready to find your family, Spot? Don't forget about us. Promise you'll come back and visit every Christmas? I'll never forget you. We've got to get going. Okay, the coast is clear. Here goes nothing. Let's go! Whoa! What are you doing in there? Hey, Mom. We're working on a Christmas surprise for you and Dad. Well, how about some breakfast for my little Rembrandts? We're really kind of busy. Jason, you want breakfast? Okay, I'll bring it up to you. Jason wants a bowl of cereal. No peeking, Mom. It'd ruin the surprise. A week ago, you guys wouldn't even talk to each other. <laughs> Where are the aliens? And what have they done with my boys? Hey guys, what's up? Oh! Rocky Mountains dead ahead! I don't know where we go from here though. No signs of Dinosaur Glen. <laughs> Spot, where are you going? Spot, we're gonna hit the mountain! dinosaurs here. Maybe we can come back later, but it's getting late, and it's Christmas Eve. I've got to get home soon. You know, as far as Tommy and I are concerned, you are family. Maybe we can tell Mom and Dad about you, and you can come live with us forever. I guess it's not the same as being here with your own family. I promise, Spot, if there's a way for me to find your family, I'll do it. Cedar Peak is no place for a dinosaur to live. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Spot. I'll see you in the morning. Ah, 
Picasso has arrived. We were wondering if we'd get to see you guys before Santa gets here. I have some bad news. What's wrong? You didn't get your Christmas project done? No, it's about Jason. Is everything okay? Everything's fine! Tommy's just being dramatic. My Christmas project didn't turn out too well, so we're just gonna have to give you his. Jason! You're here! Of course I'm here. Who wants to have Christmas Eve dinner upstairs? If you're still up when Santa gets here, he won't leave you any presents. Good night! Night, Mom! Night, Dad! Night, boys! See you in the morning. Oh, Jason, this one's from Santa. Oh, thanks. It's a Robosaurus, Jason. Isn't that what you told Santa you wanted? Mom and Dad, we have something for you. Oh, good. The big Christmas surprise. This is for you. This one's for you. I get one, too? Oh, boys, it's a masterpiece. Wow, Tommy, this is great. I'm gonna hang it up in my room. Your turn, Tommy. Thanks, Jason. Mom, about Aunt Tessa's present... No, you can't open it yet, Jason. She's on her way now. There's nothing in that box but broken eggshells. They're gonna know I opened it early. Maybe they'll think it got broken in the mail. Sooner or later, we're gonna have to tell him about Spot. We can't hide him forever. I mean, eventually he's gonna get too big for that... Uh-oh. Tommy, I think we have a problem. I guess it's time to tell everyone the truth. Aunt Tess is here! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Tess! Happy Holidays! Hi, Aunt Tess! Merry Christmas! Mom, Dad, Aunt Tess, there's something Tommy and I need to tell you. What can you tell us inside? It's a little chilly out here. Actually, out here is better. Because I need to show you something. You see, last week, well, Tommy and I... We kind of have this secret, and it's not a bad secret, but... It's Christmas, guys, so I'm sure you'll get away with just about anything. So up with it, before we all get frostbite. We opened Aunt Tess's present early, and we think it's time you met him. Who? I knew it! I knew it! Oh, Tommy! I swear to you, I did not get him a puppy. I said no pets, Tess. If it's so much as a gerbil. Mom, Dad, and Tess, meet Spot. It's well, a. Well, it's, it's not a, a gerbil. It's a pterosaur. <laughs> it's a dinosaur. Oh! <laughs> Get in the house! Now! He's coming after us! No, Mom! He's friendly! He won't hurt us! He's a dinosaur, Jason! What do you know about dinosaurs? Uh, everything? Is this your idea of a Christmas present? It was a petrified egg! I thought it would be cute! What's that? Who's there? It's footsteps! Something's coming! What could possibly have footsteps that heavy? It can't be! Whoa! Tommy, look! It's a brontosaurus! Awesome! Something. I don't want any trouble out of you. Wow. 
spot. I think they're here for you. <coughs> Merry Christmas, Spot. Don't go, Spot. You've got two families now, so don't forget about your Christmas family. <coughs> This Christmas, give something kids love. McDonald's gift certificates, just a dollar each or five for five dollars. It is a Sunday. It's a good time for the great taste. Say thank you. Oh, McDonald's. I feel great. Oh, yes. The futuristic clutch poppers, each sold separately. They're built to take on whatever stands in their way. You can rev those treads, pop that button, and their powerful motor gives them the speed they need to attack hills, rocks, even tackle another fast track. Fast track attack. Clutch poppers always ready to go. Fast tracks, each sold separately. New from Tonka. Ghostbuster toys, so much fun, it's spooky. Play Ghostbusters. Let's go! With your own play figures. Come on there, Ghostbusters. Jake has a magic backpack and ghost gun. Prime Evil has a real cape. Look out, humans. Ah! Pull yourself together, you rusty wreck. That's spooky! Ghostbuster figures from Shopper. So much fun, it's spooky. Hey. I hope you enjoyed the Christmas dinosaur. Um, I know I, I it, it's goofy, but like I said, it's one of the ones I saw it and I had to put it on here. So okay, so we're, we're, this is the last for today. Next episode, I should say, is coming up. But still, want to hear what was your favorite Christmas year? Um, I don't know. I mean, the year, I can't, I can't remember what years, but you can also tell me like, oh yeah, the year I got, you know, for me, it was the year I got an Atari and it was the year I got a uh, VCR for Christmas, so, but yeah, yeah, let me know there, yeah, right. best year for Christmas. So, I found this cartoon completely by chance, and now this is going to hopefully end up in rotation on the regular one, 
and this is Canadian and it is Martin Mystery and uh, I don't know I kind of dig it uh, I'm not gonna give nothing away like I said I just found this It's not very old uh, it's a fun Canadian cartoon as most 100% Canadian so it's one of the ones that you can tell you just look at it and go yeah yeah it's Canadian yeah, yeah. Yep. It's, it's not like anime so hey look who's gonna join us it's Vince you gonna say hello to everybody Vince you gonna you gonna you gonna tell everybody have a good Saturday no no you gonna tell everybody Merry Christmas Merry Christmas you gonna tell them gotta, you gotta tell them over here say Merry Christmas Christmas. <laughs> All right, go back on over, bud. All right. Hey, Vince had to come in and say Merry Christmas. So, all right. I want you guys to enjoy the Martin Mystery Eternal Christmas. Hey, Nana Snow Globe, I completely forgot about this. She said it would always make my wishes come true. No, hasn't worked so far. <gasps> oh, you're such a klutz. You can't do anything right. I just wish I could have a perfect Christmas for once in my life. Oh! 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 Eternal Christmas! around what are you talking about diana school's out for christmas vacation it's the perfect time to be goofing around not according to my schedule three o'clock find martin and get a ride home four o'clock change into flannel jammies and make holiday shortbread cookies five o'clock commence watching sappy tear-jerking christmas flicks on tv <laughs> wow that sounds like fun i especially like the part where you plan every waking second are you making fun of me look Dee. All I'm saying is the holidays are supposed to be about spontaneous fun, not about forced merriment. Now toss the day timer and chill. Toss my day timer? Never! I'd be lost without it! That had so better not be what I think it is. Mom promised us the week off. Aha! Maybe she just wants to wish us a Merry Christmas. I guess I can pencil her in. Where's Java? He's probably hiding from you and the organizer from hell. Martin Mystery, clear. Diana Lombard, clear. Ho, ho, ho. I just love eggnog. Gross! What's in here, Billy? I ran out of normal eggs, so I had to substitute with the egg of the three-horned albino rhinoceros. <laughs> it looks like you better schedule a 3.30 holiday stomach pumping. Merry Christmas! Nice look, Job. Especially the lid. Only, I'm not exactly catching the Christmas vibe. Job and I are both alone for the holiday, so we rented the cabin and we're going ice fishing. Christmas tree. Can I touch it? Go ahead. It was a present from the Centurion Galaxy. It's luminescent, so there's no need for light. Ooh, cool. 
And there's a little something under there for each of you. Oh, Mom, you shouldn't have. <laughs> a flashing strobe light decoder ring? I really wanted to get you something you'd like. And I've noticed you enjoy looking at shiny things. <laughs> That's Martin, all right. Easily amused. Excellent choice, Mom. Hey, quit it! Your turn, Agent Lombard. I just hope you like your gift as much as Martin does. Wow, how <laughs> interesting. Um, what is it exactly? It's a paperweight. How perfect. Not just any paperweight. It's one of a kind. Made from a piece of the twister I brought back from my Tennessee vacation. <laughs> Very uh, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Now, if you'll excuse us, the holidays await. Not so fast. Several motorists have disappeared from the same stretch of mountain road in Upper Laurentians, Quebec. I'd like you two to check it out. Uh, but, Mom, it's the holidays. Uh, besides, the motorists probably just went off the road in a winter storm. No storms have been reported in the area. The sooner you're on it, the sooner you can start your vacation. Billy? going. Stop being so uptight. You wanted Christmas? Well, here it is. Now mellow out and enjoy the holiday scenery. <laughs> it's way too freaky out here. And your hat is giving me a major headache. Let's see. One hour to get back to the exit. Forty minutes to get back to the city. That should get me home just in time to trim the tree. But I'll definitely miss my 7.30 holiday caroling. Okay, that's it. I can't take another second of you and your date timer and drudgery. Well, I I can't take another second of your ridiculous flashing hat and your stupid scenic routes! Fine! Then let's get this mission over with ASAP! Then you'll be free to do your boring thing, and I'll be free to do my fun thing! And in the meantime, don't even bother talking to me! Hmm. Fine! From this moment on, I won't say another word! I don't know, but your screaming wasn't helping. For someone who's not talking, you sure have a lot to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Next time I'll keep my utter terror to myself! Huh? Hey, skid marks. I wonder if they have anything to do with the missing motorists. Guess we'll never know, since they vanish into thin air. Okay, I just got a serious case of the creeps. Why do you say we look for the missing motorist someplace else? Okay, now I'm the one who's freaked. Diana? Diana! Relax, Mr. Spontaneous Fun. It's just me. What was with that blinding flash of light? It was probably just the headlights of an oncoming car. It must have knocked us into the snowbank. Speaking of cars, where'd ours go? <gasps> More importantly, where'd that come from? Man, they sure like Christmas around here. <laughs> That's an understatement. I mean, hello, this joint is tackier than that hat of yours. I like to think of it as festive. Ah! Oh, sorry. My name is Clifford. Are you lost? Oh, uh, no. We're looking for some people who've gone missing. You wouldn't happen to know anything about it, would you? Oh, my, no. This is a quiet little town. Nothing of interest ever happens here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm in the midst of my holiday preparations. You'd best be on your way. Just follow that path through the trees. It'll take you back to the highway. Ever get the feeling you're not wanted? Every day. Unfortunately, I'm forced to hang with you. <laughs> Duh, I was talking about Clifford. I mean, think about it. He wasn't exactly driving the welcome wagon. You're right. 
We should probably stick around and check things out. Oh, so long, roasting marshmallows. Sayonara, mulled apple cider. Au revoir, tree trimming fun. Whoa, if that's not bizarro, I don't know what is. You mean their outdated fashion sense? No, I mean the way they just keep going around the pond the exact same way every single time. They're even more boring than you are. Hello, it's a small town. People get stuck in their routines, Martin. Okay, but have you also noticed there aren't any cars around? So, maybe they're like the Amish. You know, not into the whole technology thing. Then how would you explain these tire tracks? You want activated. Slime scan selected. <laughs> What's that going to tell you? That the tires are made of rubber? Analyzing data. Sample comprised of a man-made plastic compound. Whoa. Forget the tires. <gasps> the snow's plastic. I know. It's freaky, huh? Be behind you. How dare you spy on us? I thought I told you two to leave. Last time I checked, it was a free country, Clifford. Besides, what are you going to do? Sick some Christmas decorations on us? <laughs> Way to give the crazy dude ideas, Martin! How did I know he was going to go all scroogey on us? Find them! Now! <laughs> Martin, what's happening? I don't know, but it's almost as if Clifford controls this town. Hmm. <laughs> Get them! <laughs> Look, it's the path that Clifford told us about. This must be the way out of here. <laughs> okay, I gotta admit, I didn't see this one coming. <laughs> Uh, oh, my head. What happened? Well, the last thing I remember, you let us into a patch of overly friendly Christmas trees. After that, I'm a little foggy. But if I had to guess, I'd say Clifford tied us up. Hmm? Oh, oh, great! Now what? I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but it looks like we're on a conveyor belt headed straight for a giant mixing blade. Nuts, candied fruit, we're about to be turned into a fruit cake! I guess that explains why it always tastes so bad. Help! 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 <laughs> Something tells me we've just found the missing motorist. That's right, and this is what happens to all trespassers, because nothing is going to interfere with my perfect Christmas. Nothing! Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a tree trimming ceremony to officiate. Mark Mystery, this is all your fault! Just hang on, D. I've almost got it! You are activated. I'm kind of selected. <laughs> You okay, Dee? I'm fine. Thanks to you. Now let's get out of here before we say something nice we'll both regret. <laughs> what happened? Where are we? Two very good questions. Unfortunately, your guess is as good as mine. Huh. Uh, hey, look! A snow globe! Only... It's empty. Mm, that's weird. These things are usually filled with quaint little scenes. You know, figure skaters, gingerbread houses, plastic snow. Hey, wait a minute! That's it! What? You think we're trapped in a snow globe? Not in a snow globe, in a snow globe world! The crack must have released the contents! And how exactly do you think that happened? 
I don't know, but I'm gonna fire up the Legend X and find out. You want activated. Legend X selected. Aha! A turn-of-the-century legend about an antique snow globe. The globe will grant the owner one wish on Christmas Eve, but the spell can no longer be broken once the sun rises on Christmas Day. Clifford must have wished for a perfect Christmas, and now we're trapped here! That only gives us about five hours to break the spell, or we'll be stuck here forever. Uh-uh. <laughs> There's no way I'm gonna let that happen. I'm gonna get out of this nightmare, away from you, and back on my holiday schedule if it's the last thing I ever do! It just might be. I guess the fish aren't biting tonight. Shh! Fish no like noise. Shh! What Java say? It's a call from Martin and Diana. Hmm. I wonder what they want. Hello? Hey! We need help! We're trapped in a strange Christmas village and we can't get out! Help. Diana? Hi. Diana? Are you still there? According to the GPS on my computer, they're not far from here. Let's motor! Nothing is going to ruin my perfect Christmas! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Looks like you were right, Martin! Clifford does control this town! And something tells me he doesn't want us to break the spell! <laughs> I think it's time to bolt. Now! Go! Go! Time to take them out with a song! Finish them off! Watch out! I, I gotta be honest, I never thought I'd go this way! Oh, am I ever glad to see you two! But I'm sorry we brought you into this. Not as sorry as I am! Oh. Watch out! Thanks. Now let's get out of here! We can't, because we're stuck in a magical evil snow globe world. And the clock's ticking. We've only got one hour until sunrise. Then we become permanent residents of this hellacious holiday postal code. Have you tried restoring the snow globe to its original state? Think that'll work? I have absolutely no idea. But it's worth a shot! <laughs> Great thinking, John! Careful, John! It hardens like cement! Nice move, Java! Now we've got to restore the snow globe! Maybe there's an incantation in the Legend X! <sighs> no time! Hey, we 
can use the gifts Mom gave us. Good idea. We're glad that's over. <laughs> Whoa, what was that for? Guess I was just in the mood for a spontaneous holiday hug. Hey, I kind of like this. Maybe we should schedule these more often. Well, it's officially Christmas morning. And that means Java and I have some fish to catch. Ready, Job? Mm hmm. Christmas fishing. Can I offer either of you a lift? Thanks, Mom, but Di and I are going home together for Christmas. I can't wait to see what other holiday treats she's got planned in that daytimer of hers. <laughs> the only thing I've got planned is you, me, and a week of fun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. Actually, Martin and I have decided to give each other a little space once we get home. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, right, Martin? Ah. Uh, right. Now let's get out of here. We're on vacation! Merry Christmas, everyone! Yes, happy holidays. To you too, Clifford. Burger King has gift certificates, 50 cents each, or books of 10 for $5. Great to give, great to receive. We wish you a Merry Christmas from America Burger King. There's a place in town that has 12 terrific glasses for the 12 days of Christmas. And every time you buy a medium-sized Pepsi for only 59 cents, you get to keep the glass it comes in. And here's the nicest part of the whole offer. There are only two glasses every week, so you have to keep coming back to get the whole set. And you know why that's so nice? Because the place you have to keep coming back to is Taco Bell. <laughs> 
This is the Micro Machine Man presenting the most midget miniature motorcade of Micro Machine. Each one has dramatic details, terrific trims, defender styling, precision paint jobs, working wheels, Micro Machine cars of vast variety, including Lamborghini, Trans Am, Corvette, Warbuck, Four Blazer, Pickup Charger, and many more. Micro Machine planes, polished, perfect precision, like F-15, Corsair, Space Shuttle, P-51, Mustang, Micro Machine boats, a fabulous fleet of tugs, PTs, and speedboats. Talk about small! Micro Machines are less gargantuan than a grasshopper, as midget as a marble, and smaller than a silver dollar. Hey, Dad! You want to get more Micro Machines to add to our collection? Yeah! A miniature midget colossal collection of micro machines. Collect them, trade them, race them. The micro machines set sold separately from Galoob. They're really small. Here's a real tough machine in action. Here's Tonka's mighty roughneck pickup. With Big Duke at the wheel. A working winch for getting out of trouble. With a jack and changeable wheels. The roughneck pickup. The Tonka toy built Tonka Tonka. Mighty Roughneck Pickup with Big Duke comes with everything you see here. From Tonka. Hey, I hope you liked Martin Mystery. Because, um, man, if everything, fingers crossed, we're going we're gonna to run more episodes of this. I, I just kind of dig this cartoon. So, you know what? We're drawing to the end. And uh, I want to say a big shout out to everybody. Um, you know, Nufi, Robert, Rob, uh, what the guys at Way Out, um, Nancy, uh, just, you know, Winter, all you guys, you're great. Everybody pops up on Saturday mornings. You're all fun. I like hanging out with you. Um, it's a blast. Um, so, okay, here we go. Boom. As always, you can catch me on Group Therapy TV podcast every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're already booking guests for next year. Um, so we got lots of good, cool stuff coming up on that one. Sci Fridays, Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, you're watching Saturday Morning Serials right now. Every Saturday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, new episode drops. And you can still see me on the Monster Channel where you can go back and watch old episodes and you can talk with the people in there. Or you can do like some people have done, as they've told me, they'll watch the current episode and then the current episode on the Monster Channel at the same time. And they'll be, so, you know, I was like, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's legitimately watching some of the early episodes were short. So at least... Six hours of cartoons in the morning. Woo. Hey, I love cartoons. I don't know if I've watched them that many in that short. I watch six hours of cartoons in four hours. So, but I will have to say this to all you guys. I want to say uh, yet again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, but we will have an episode before you for you New Year's Day. Uh, I don't take that time off. I might I might take off. The other two shows, but you will have me here for Saturday morning, unless something horrible happens, like when I got really sick and couldn't talk, um, I will be here getting you guys cartoons every Saturday morning, uh, along with the vintage commercials and bumpers and all that fun stuff, the old PSAs. Um, hey. I, I just like this as much as you guys do, and I appreciate every one of you, and uh, I want you all to take care, uh, have a great holiday, and I'll see you all there.